Lesson 3 of the tutorial Sketch Part in Context SolidWorks Assembly Design. In this lesson, we will start with the static assembly and sketch part of our built crane concept. In a previous lesson, if you remember lesson 2, we covered the basics of what we will be designing for the tutorial and uh, provided a short tour of our finished models. And as in the previous lesson, there is a tutorial guide with additional information beyond what this video is going to provide, and it's named Sketch Part in Context SolidWorks Assembly Design, Lesson 3. So I talk a little bit about file management. Make sure you uh, read about that and understand that. But uh, to get to this point, what we need to do is uh, create a folder named uh, Model 5000S. And for you, it'll be in a directory of your choosing. Just make sure that uh, within that folder by now, you will have put in your, uh, your um, JPEG file of the drawing that you downloaded. And we're going to be referencing that here in just a moment. Our next step here is to open up SolidWorks and create a new assembly. And then from that, we're going to create a new part within that assembly. And then we're going to uh, you know, save those uh, various part names right away. It's always a good uh, practice to get into to, uh, when you open up something to save it right away and save it continuously as you work. So let's do this. You want to go to SolidWorks. You want to go to File. You want to go to Open. Or actually, you want to go to New. Sorry about that. That's one way of doing it. And the other way is to go to the pull-down menu. You can click on the New button up here. What that does typically is opens up uh, the template uh, tab. Your template tab might a little, look a little bit different from mine. I have a lot of templates in here for various uh, clients and myself. But uh, you want to have uh, make sure that you click on the assembly. Mine's already an assembly in inches. But if yours isn't in inches, just to recap, you want to make sure that uh, you change in the options uh, you know, button up here, change those settings. So to begin with, we're going to go ahead and close this out. We have no uh, parts to put into the assembly, so we're going to red X that. So you want to go to the Options button up here. And for Document Properties, you want to make sure your units are changed to inch-pound seconds. And then go to OK. The OK, it's a little bit off the screen here. And that might be a problem with some of these videos. A lot of the menu options that uh, come up are really big. They go from the top of the screen to the bottom of the screen, and sometimes they get truncated in these videos. And I'll let you know when that happens. So at this point, let's go ahead and save it. So File, Save As. You want to make sure it's in your uh, Model 5000S folder. And uh, you want to call it Boat Crane Assembly. And then go to Save. Next thing you want to do is you want to uh, go to the Insert Components button up here. But don't click on that yet. Go to the pull down menu. You want to go to New Part. And what that does is it takes that part and embeds it into your assembly up here. You can see it here. It's called Part 4. Yours is probably Part 1. I've been gone through a couple of iterations of this. And that's one thing about SolidWorks. It always sequentially numbers things as you uh, continue to create features in SolidWorks. What you have here with the green check mark uh, by your cursor, it's asking you what plane do you want to associate the front plane of this new part to? So what it's saying is it's going to take this front plane up here and I want you to associate it with one of these three planes up here. Now with this in context design that we're using that we're going to be implementing here, we're always going to be using the same plane. So the front plane is always going to be associated with the front plane of the assembly, right plane of the part, the right plane of the assembly, and so on and so forth. So to cut it short, we're going to pick, click on front plane. So the, the two lane planes line up. And then what we're going to do is we're going to edit component, click on this so it exits out of that. And what that does initially is it opens up a, uh, a uh, file down here, it opens up a, uh, a sketch on that front plane, but we don't necessarily want to do that quite yet. What we do want to do is we want to right click on this and we want to open that and get our own little window of that. So here's our own window, we have part 4 uh, opened up, we want to go ahead and save that as and yes, it's giving you a warning up here in regard to the in-context relationship. And yes, we want to go to OK. So this is going to be called our crane sketch part. And we're going to put that into the very same folder. You want to make sure it's in your Model 5000S folder. And then go to Save. OK, first thing we're going to do is we're going to go to the front plane. We're going to go to the sketch element. We're going to click on that. And then we're going to go over here to Sketch Picture. Now, you may not have Sketch Picture on your uh, Sketch uh, portion, your Sketch tab of your Command Manager, and this is how you get it. And this is one of those instances where the, you know, the menu is off the screen, but I'll try to describe this for you. What you want to do is you want to right-click over here, anywhere in your Command Manager, and it brings up a dialog box. What's down here, about five or six elements more towards the bottom, is a button called Customize or it's a text that says Customize. Not Customize Menu, but Customize. Customize Menu is on the bottom. Customize is uh, the one on top of that. 
what it does is it gives you this dialog box. You want to go to the Commands tab. You want to go to the Sketch option down here. And what this does is it gives you all the sketch uh, options available that you can put on your Command Manager or your toolbar if you're using toolbars. So what you're looking for is this one called Sketch Picture. And you just simply drag that up to where you want to put it on your Command Manager, drop it into place. Uh, concurrently, or the, if you want to do some, something very similar to that, and get rid of some uh, items up here that you don't need, like maybe two sketch pictures, all you have to do is drag that off into Oblivion, and it just takes it out of there. So now that we have sketch picture up here, let's go ahead and click on that. In your Model 5000S folder, it's going to be looking for that, uh, that sketch, that uh, JPEG file I had you download, and we're going to go ahead and open that up. And what it's going to do is it's initially going to park it right here at your origin. It gives you a dialog box over here and tell you what your coordinates are. So this lower left-hand corner of the image is going to be parked at the 0, 0 coordinate for the X and Y down here. It's got no rotation on it, but we're going to change these. And the actual size of the image is about, uh, about 4 feet by about 3 feet approximately. But we're going to change that too, just slightly. So we're going to approximately move the origin to about that location. It's going to be right underneath that section view. A couple things we need to do. We need to scale this image and we also need to uh, rotate it so it's in the proper orientation so we can sketch right on top of it. First thing we're going to do is we're going to take this uh, enable scale toolbar or scale tool up here. We're going to move this. This is new to SolidWorks 2014. And uh, it is, it's kind of convenient. It's, it's the old way you used to have to, and I'm going to show you how to do that in a moment for those people who have a sol uh, later versions or older versions of SolidWorks. Um, it uh, eliminates a couple steps, and once you get used to using this, it's actually kind of a time saver. So let's go ahead and move that. What we're going to do is we're going to move that to the very edge of the, cr uh, the boom, where we have a known dimension up here, and we're going to scale that. So this end we're going to pr pretty closely drag to where the end of that's going to be. And what it's going to do is it's going to give us a, uh, a dimension dialog box. We're going to ignore that by going to the red X. But what we want to do is we want to get that fairly close to horizontal. So we're going to continue to press uh, you know, those incremental buttons up here to try to get that to where we think it might be uh, horizontal. Go back to your uh, scale tool grab the end of it, that purple arrow, and you'll notice that it does snap to the horizontal. So if you have this in a pretty good location, it looks like three degrees right on the money is uh, pretty darn close. We're going to go to that red X again and kind of look at that a little bit closer. You don't have to be exact because the sketched uh, image is not, uh, is not perfect, but it does look pretty darn good. So get that the horizontal as it is right now, pretty close to the end. And this time when the dialog box comes up for the dimension, we're going to type in 280 inches. 280 inches is what we have on our, on our drawing up here for that boom length. And I think it's fairly accurate. So there we have it. We now have it scaled. We have it oriented. We just need to move it. So what we want to do is we want to take the origin that's over here. And we want to move that so it's right below this section view. Or somewhere close. Again, the drawing isn't close, and it might take a little bit of iteration between the front view and the front sketch and the right sketch to get this correct. So now that we have that in the right uh, position, what we want to do is we want to make note of the properties over here and do a little bit of rounding, too. So this is going to be negative 45. The one below that is going to be a negative 75. It's just about negative 75.5, but we're going to keep it to whole numbers, so we're going to type in minus uh, 75. Now remember what that means is it's 75 inches in from the, on the y coordinate. So with the y coordinate being up here, it's 75 inches higher than uh, right here. The origin is 75 inches higher than that point down here. So we're going to keep the orientation, the uh, angular orientation, of three degrees, and just to keep this nice and round, we're going to keep make that 674. And we're not going to change this dimension down here because we want to maintain our aspect ratio down here. So when we change one, it's going to change the other. So 674 translate to 489.7 and some change after that. Not going to change that one, but we are going to write this down and make note of these things. So minus 45, minus 75, 3, and then 674. So make sure you write that down because we're going to need that for the, for the next view. 
Let's see how that done. Go to the green check mark that embeds our sketch, uh, our sketch uh, picture, and our image in the background here on our uh, sketch that we have here. And we're going to rename that sketch. By the way, we're going to call that uh, front sketch. And we're going to go to rebuild. Now we don't have any elements in front sketch, so it doesn't uh, any sketch elements in here. So it's, it might give you a negative sign. But uh, when we get to things, um, when we start putting sketch elements in here, uh, we'll get that fully defined and we'll explain it as we get there. Okay, we're going to do this again. This time we're going to go to the right plane. And we're going to go to sketch picture. Oh, go to right plane, go to sketch element up here. Then we're going to go to sketch picture. And we're going to click on that again. We're going to include the same sketch picture because just like before, we're going to sketch right on top of that. But you know, this is sketch pictures down here. We're still looking at the front plane. So what we want to do is we want to go normal to. Go to view orientation. Go to normal to. Let's take a look at that. This time we're going to do it the old-fashioned way. For those people who don't have SolidWorks 2014, we're not going to enable the sketch tool. And we're going to do this the old-fashioned way. We know we have to scale this up a little bit. So let's go ahead and do that. And then move that to where we think it should be. The origin in this view is going to be uh, in the middle of the crane. So we didn't talk about this a little bit, but it's in that, uh, that paper you're going to download uh, for this lesson. But uh, you want to make some consideration of where the origin is going to be and the orientation of your model. And in this one, we're going to make sure or, uh, the origin is going to be at the very bottom and at the middle of the rotational elements here. It's going to, it's going to be in the middle of this uh, crane base. So with that said, we're going to remember some of the items that we had in here before in our dialog box. But what we want to do here is we want to sketch. So we're going to go to the sketch picture, go to the green check mark. We're going to go to sketch, we're going to go to center line, and we're going to approximately draw a horizontal line out here. And we're going to dimension that to 280 degrees or 280 inches. So now it takes some iteration. This is a, a completely undefined line, so you can take uh, the endpoint of that line, move it to where you like, and then click on your sketch picture and its iteration. You have to go back and forth to do this, this is uh, the old fashioned way. It takes a little bit more time to do, but it's fairly accurate, just like using the, the sketch tool that, uh, that we had before. So once you get that in there fairly close, we also want to make sure we get the orientation in here. It's going to be the same three degrees we had before. So let's go ahead and get that in right away. And it looks like the sketch picture needs to be up to us a little bit more. Somewhere close is good. And that looks like it'll work. So before we do the green check mark, let's make sure we remember our elements in here. This one's going to change because our x orientation we're now moved over here a little bit. So we're going to make uh, round that number up. So it's a minus 176. The y coordinate should be the same. Should be a minus uh, minus 75. Now this is a little bit higher than we had uh, than where the origin is. But as soon as we get that minus 75 in there, it should be pretty darn close where it needs to be. Okay, so we're going to force that into place, and we're going to change that number one more time. So this is still going to be minus 75. And this one's got to be a minus 199. So that makes a little bit more sense. That's still going to be 3 degrees. And this number we had before is 674, so we're going to go ahead and change that. And then uh, the last number is going to be derived from this number, because we're going to maintain that aspect ratio. So that looks pretty good, but we're going to have to move that down just a little bit more. So it looks like minus 78 might be a better number. So now we have uh, two different numbers that we're looking at. In the front sketch, it was a minus 75. In this sketch, it's minus 78. Since we have a lot more detail on this sketch than we do on, uh, on the front sketch, I'm going to go ahead and go back to the front sketch and change that to minus 78 too, because it's a little bit more important to make sure our origins are pretty close to where the bottom of the model is going to be. Go to the green check mark. We're going to go ahead and rename this to our right sketch. Go to our front sketch. Let's go ahead and rebuild that. Go to our front sketch. And go to our sketch picture. And let's go to the normal two button. And let's change our number down here to minus 78. Changes uh, the position of the origin just a little bit, as you can see down here, but not by much. You can see that that line's kind of curving over here anyway, so I think that might be a better choice. Okay, so I think that's enough for this lesson.